Welcome to the Bradenton CRA Community Redevelopment Agency, November 16th at uh, about 2.04 p.m. Uh, meeting is called to order. Citizens comments not on the agenda. Anybody? Okay. Um, um, I know Mr. Schroeder wanted to be here. He just texted me that he's running late, so if you can allow <coughs> me to be sure. in case. Okay, very good. All right, then let's move right into the consent agenda. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items. I'd like to pull uh, F, G, H. F, G, and H. F, G, and H. Okay. Uh, you're gonna make- uh, Hold on a second. Right, that's it. Okay, so the resolutions, you're gonna make the motion for the rest of it? Yes, I'll make a motion for the uh, <coughs> consent agenda A, B, C, D, and E. Second. Motion a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, very good. What do you got, Bill? Uh, resolution CRA uh, fund is, uh, isn't this for the, uh, Community policing. These are the budget adjustments for last fiscal year. So, uh, based on statutes, we have to um, to make sure we reconcile all the accounts and the funds with, by the end of November. So, we went through each uh, line item with, and uh, we had this verified by finance in order to close out the right, year. No problem. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve those three. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. All CRAs, uh, update from community outreach meetings and events. Good afternoon. Um, we had three events um, uh, in October and so far in November, and I wanted to just update you so you so you kind of know what happened at each event. Some of you attended some of them. So the first one was Main Street Live on October 29th, and we have some pictures from that event. Mm. It was a huge success. Um, so far, uh, th from what I was told, there were five to six thousand people that attended. And it was interesting that at another event that we had a booth, um, a few people came up and told me that they loved the band, that they follow them. They're a, a band from Tampa, and that it was their first time. So they were so happy to see something different coming. So, um, so Jean G attended, Miss Farmer, at, uh, Mrs. Farmer attended uh, the event and it truly was uh, full with family activities. And uh, I'll, Mrs. Farmer, if you wanna add some more, and I know Mrs. Coker was also there if you'd like to give us your experience. It was a fun, energizing event. And um, what we did is we gave away you know, our little things and then we had a mailing list. So we got about 12 people to sign up. And um, one of the people talked about wanting to be a volunteer. So um, we're gonna organize some volunteers to help with these sort of things. We're gonna get a meeting together so that they can learn about the CRA and why we're there and what we're doing. And um, yeah, so 
I just thought I'd tell you real quickly what the November details are because it's going to be really fun at this next one. It's a fall theme, and it's got, um, you know, the food trucks and early holiday shopping, but they've got a three-legged turkey race and a turkey contest, um, turkey, like, dress up like a turkey contest. So a gratitude wall, it just, they are amazing, the things that they've come up with for this. So it should be fun. And then the black honkies, or the music, so. What's the date on it? It's November 23rd, it's the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Okay. So nice little kickoff time, yeah. Yeah, I, if I could, I, I'd love to just, I did talk to Morgan about this, I thought, they hit it out of the park. They did exactly what we wanted. I loved the branding they did behind the band. The, that, that, I don't know what you call it, that wall where they had the Main Street. I mean, the branding for Main Street Live was really good. I saw, I saw kids. I felt like it was a good crowd. I would love to know, have you gotten any feedback from the mer merchants? Were they happy with it? I did. And were they I happy? I ran and talked to them, and they were thumbs up. The old Main Street merchants? Every one of them. Good. Awesome. Because they that's what we want to hear. More whatever they're selling than they've ever <laughs> sold. And they were so busy, they said, ask me later. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm just. I'm so busy. I'm sweating. The owners are out there uh, serving stuff. It was, it was yeah. great. Yeah. They were well, very happy. That's what I wanted to hear because you've got people that have invested in downtown and w I want to make sure that what we're doing is is helping them Up nice. so great great news and I I, I apologize I forgot you were there yeah, too. I was there the whole time and and I've got a couple of issues now that the good part they got because uh, they come to me and they <clears throat> they got billed you okay with this Marianne Am I okay with what? I didn't know you. I were haven't doing. heard what you said. I know that's what my problem was. Um, I didn't say anything. Okay, they they were billed a thousand dollars from the city of Bradenton for the use of the street. I've never heard of us ever billing anybody. Yes, we have. I, I have to yes, say, I do. checked when I heard about it, and everyone pays that. Is it? Yes. Well, um, I asked Karen, she was in charge of events, and she said she didn't recall ever being that, uh, being charged. At that time, at the time that I was in charge of events, event specialist, I do not recall ever charging for the, the event, well, the venue, if it was at Riverwalk or something like that, the pavilion. But as far as Old Main Street, the charges that I recalled were the damage deposit, sanitation, police. Mm -hmm. um, but if it is a for-profit entity that is doing the event. My, my point is, is that may very well have changed. And mm -hmm. that's why I reached out to you to let you know that that was a long time ago for, for me. In my well, it was two years ago. Well, I talked to Kelly and everyone is paying that fee, so. Um, what, uh, now, my next question, since you all know more about it than I do, what, what do we do with that money? Why, why I, is the city collecting money? What, 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 what fund does that go in and how is it spent? I don't know. Why no. don't you ask somebody in finance? I did. Well, I'm sorry. I guess they haven't gotten back with you. Well, I don't know. Why did you just make Well, that? because you're asking the questions. Obviously, you well, don't you have the information. Knew, knew so all I, the, said, I thought you might not have all the answers. I didn't know. No. So, I'm, but uh, it, it's called, <coughs> hold on a second, hold on a second. It's called an event department. I've never heard of that word, a department. We have an event department? No, we have an event. There is a committee made event up. Committee. It's called ERC. It's the right. event review committee. But the invoice had event department. Okay. Okay. The, 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 but the, those monies, so just just to question. just to get the meeting back on track, if the city is charging the merchants money, this is not the meeting to talk about that. This is a CRA meeting. If the city's if the city's billing the merchants, that's a city business. Not billing the merchants. Part of the issue is if you have a for-profit entity that comes into the city to do an event. The city has every right to recoup. It's, if, if it's a not-for-profit, that's one thing. There's been a very, very hard line drawn 
with whether it is a not-for-profit. And, and the other thing is, is if it's a not-for-profit, but it's a fundraiser for them, they pay too. And well, I don't disagree money, with that. That money, and I apologize, I just want to get this out, that, that money very well could be paying for the overtime for the police okay. and the public works. Good. I'm, uh, that, that was I mean, the that, next question probably, because and, they were and complaining. Not you close down a traffic a street. Okay, the next question was the police, no one could find the police there. I saw plenty of police. I heard you say that earlier. I don't know why you're saying that. I was that. up at the stage for the full three hours. Not one police officer was up there. Now I got information from you that there was three that were supposed to be there. Only one showed? What the PD has told us is that one of them, I believe, showed up instead of two. I don't know. I'm not aware of any Just three. One. That was come that come from the police, not from me or anybody. Else. The police said only one showed up, right? That's what I was told. Well, they got to pay them. So, how did you see more than one? I saw police down there. I, that's all I know. Okay, but they're being billed. I thought the number. Don't hold me to this. Twenty five hundred dollars for police, and I asked to look. They they did the aerial uh, photograph. Couldn't find any. Not to say that they weren't somewhere, but uh, I, I'm having an issue with it. Well, now that I'm going back in my mind, I know I saw three law enforcement officers there. Okay. Now, whether or not they were just passing through, but I or distinctly in, remember. In of, of the pubs. I, I know I saw law enforcement there. I know I felt safe there. <laughs> were so, there, were there any incidents? If I don't know. If they were, as far that as I know, might be where the officers were. Take and again, care. this is a city policy. I agree. That needs to be discussed at a city sorry, meeting, not right. the CRA. Well, okay, it doesn't, you know, we're not going to have another meeting this year, so I won't be around. So I, I'd like to get it off my chest today, if you don't mind, because we're all the same people. Mary, you keep looking around at Jane like she's going to support you. I am something. not well, looking. Well, let's just. Yeah, you are, but you know, that's all right. You Since know, you left the meeting earlier today, earlier you did not hear me say that I hurt my back and I have been sitting here in pain all day. I'm doing my best to do my job. I'm not looking at you. you I am not rolling my eyes at you anybody. I'm not you. sure you can hear me any other way. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. okay, so are we not having another meeting in December? No, no. we are not. <laughs> See, they after okay. you and I left because we had this meeting coming up, they made a decision that we're not going to have one. But uh, quite frankly, I think that's uh, a violation of the charter because we're required to have two meetings a month, aren't we? Wait, the, the two meetings a month. It's in the charter. Cannot make a, a decision. For uh, it's very clear. No, it's n we're not having a city council meeting in December. Mr. Sanders again is only saying part of the facts. Oh, okay. We're not having a meeting in December. CRA. <coughs> I mean, any, city any council. Meetings, any meetings. Regular meetings. We're we having still have hours on meeting. You instruct us not to have okay. hours. And we still have a special meeting coming up and a CRA meeting. So we're right. We're not. But this policy is a city policy, and we as a CRA board cannot change that city policy. All right. All right. I, 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 I agree with the policy. I just, the, the, the complaints, you're beating me up, but the complaint is coming from the promoter saying I'm being billed for this and I don't think it's fair. And I'm asking the question because we agreed to put $10,000 in there. Don't say that where the money's coming from and play this city versus CRA thing. Did we not vote to? to give them $10,000 per event? Yes. All right, so it is a CRA, you know. Supported. If it wasn't for the CRA, they came okay. in here three days before, they said they couldn't do it. That 10,000 was for the music, was to so up for the music. Course, yeah. 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 Well, the music, and, and no, I, it's for the whole event, but because it's more than just music. The band costs $3,500, okay? So surely she's not taking a profit of $6,500 on that. I don't, I'd hope not. There's staging, there's lighting, there's, there's, yeah. there's other stuff that involves that, so, and, and plus they have to make a profit. But they, they were just questioning why the police wasn't there, why they were billing, bill, bill for a city street that's the taxpayers paid Are for. these questions coming from Morgan? Yes. So, okay, well, so Ms. I, she didn't say anything to me about it. But Ms. Okay. Just for the record, Ms. Bates sent an email as having a few concerns. So then I forwarded that email to Ms. Thomas and to the PD to address those concerns because I don't know the answer to those. 
Um, they responded, but apparently they only responded to me and not to Ms. Uh, Bates. So I'll be forwarding their responses to her um, as to why she was charged. But that's what Ms. Thomas said, that other events are also being charged. I don't know the rules. That's a city I policy. Just, I just didn't know we just we're just okay, facilitating the, policy, the, the policy. we're facilitating the concerns and just to try to got, address the them. last thing that I want to mention is that the 30 foot boat or whatever it was pulls up and starts drinking off the side of the boat with a tap so they're getting their booze free and the merchants are out there selling it to make a profit or to support the event how is that being allowed and why is a, a boat it's not even probably licensed legally to be on the street from what I understand, that there's a lot of inaccuracies about what you're saying, and um, what is inaccurate? it's so frustrating. What is, Pardon? What is inaccurate? That the boat was there? No. That you, you made it sound like, because I saw your email ranting about it, okay. that they're all drinking and driving, and, and, and well, I know I for say all of them, but somebody had to drive that boat. They have a whole boat crew. Oh, okay. And so they, they do not drink. The I didn't see that. Well, they, I don't know who, I don't know about that. Okay. I have no idea. We're, All right. Not the people driving the boat. Well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It, that you can't bring your own booze in there. If you can, I'll do it next time. You, just bring it in by. Uh, people have been bringing in booze to, to get downs and events, and that's one of the reasons that we said that there was not to be any bottles on the street because that was an easy way. If someone walked in with a bottle or a brand that wasn't sold on the street, then we knew that it was not purchased down there. Now, I was not at the event. I don't know what happened. Perhaps. I don't, I don't know what happened. Okay. So uh, perhaps we need to have a conversation once, once again, with the Hernando de Soto crew that brought their boat down. And it is street legal, and they are allowed to be on the street with it. All right. It is. And, 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 and again, it's, it's, it's a service. Not, that's, that's not a CRA boat. So let's just let that go. For too. the record, we have not paid any boats okay. to the de Soto okay. Society. <laughs> okay. So... Um, one request that uh, Morgan asked is, um, as uh, Mrs. Farmer mentioned, there's going to be two uh, contests uh, at the next event on November 23rd, the Dress the Turkey contest and the three-legged turkey race. And she would like some representatives from the City Council CRA board. So if you're interested, please let us know so we can pass on the information if you'd like to be the judges not to run it's the like three-legged to lose a lot of votes <laughs> um, I'm gonna be there um, also you have the the remaining of the dates if you'd like to uh, to announce the bands or come and make any announcement uh, as CRA board since we're their major sponsor again let me know and I'll coordinate the dates so that each one of you if you want has an opportunity to be up there to address the crowd. The next meeting was the 9th Avenue uh, Revitalization Community Outreach on November the 3rd. It was such a wonderful meeting. Um, it was, I think, the largest we've had in terms of community outreach. We had about over 50 people registered um, that signed in. Um, there were a lot of feedback from the community, a lot of comments. Some of them that stood out is a lot of them felt there was needed somewhere in the, com in the area, uh, some type of community center, uh, a place where the community can gather, families, seniors. Um, so they did express that uh, desire. Some of them also mentioned for more restaurants and businesses since food and drink brings people closer. Um, since the, uh, there was also a lot of, we updated them on the grants and there was a lot of interest in learning more about it. A lot of the residents came up and said since the CRA board raised it from 2,500 to 10,000 for the residential grant, that it really was something that they would like to take <coughs> to come and apply for. So we're working with them to get the word out. We also have two follow-up meetings with property owners and businesses, and um, Business Flare will be sending 
a report soon, and they will be coming to present at the December 14th CRA meeting. So some more pictures from the event. Uh, at the beginning of the meeting, the city had asked us if they could come and take some of the time from uh, from the community outreach so that they can present uh, the city hall plan. And so you see Mr. Perry gave a presentation. So again, it was a wonderful meeting. It was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. And I apologize, I got stung by a bee that afternoon and had a severe reaction. And lastly, on November 4th, uh, Festival of the Skeletons, Dia de los Muertos, um, took place in the Village of the Arts. And um, about 2,000 people attended. Uh, we had a booth there, myself and Mr. Mignon were there, and we gave out a survey to kind of engage the community to find out what would they like to see with the former green properties. So some of the feedback that we got is that um, uh, and ten, we had a 49, uh, 46 total surveys, 25 from visitors, 10, 10 from residents, and nine from business owners. Um, the two most uses that got the most votes were community garden and parking. Um, actually, if I can <coughs> say, I didn't take a picture, but our, the five properties that we purchased, it was a full parking lot with more than probably 40, 50 cars. I was amazed at how well they had parked, like right. with spacing and every, it was as if it was organized. So it they definitely- thought it had been striped up. It was, like, it was not even striped up, but it was perfectly it was lined up, yeah. yeah. Um, it was definitely used that day. Yeah, and, the, and the villages, they appreciate <laughs> it. I've never seen this. It, it, it really helped the event. And I don't know if any of you all have been going to it, but I've been going to it for years. And they were extremely happy, everybody that you talked to. And it, uh, I think that, in my personal opinion, there's more people there than that this time than I've ever seen before. Yeah. We had several visitors to our booth um, from locals, so we took the opportunity to, to take some pictures. It was a wonderful event, and I saw that Mr. Schroeder is here, so I don't know if he would like to give yeah, us um, let's, any Let's updates. go ahead and uh, let Andrew come on up. Um, so, so and the mayor had reported at one point that no one wanted parking in there, but it seems like everybody oh. parked their cars anyway. Well, I think what the comment was made at the event that I was at was that they were thinking we were going to put some sort of blacktop asphalt parking lot, mm -hmm. ugly. Mm -hmm. And that was not, I don't think, what any of us ever up here Never. said, Never. that if we were going to do parking, we wanted it to not only be parking, but could be able to be used as an event space when necessary and maybe have it be that what however we do it it's permeable so that we don't have to have the expense I specifically remember one of you saying that you'd like to keep the the lot green and not put yeah. a asphalt when you guys talked about it <coughs> at the last meeting yeah <coughs> right. brought that up so Absolutely. yeah yeah, it was always because if you if you blacktop it, you have to put in retention. If you put in retention, you eat up land. It's just and it's yeah. just it's just not worth it. And 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 the whole village deal, it kind of fits right in with the village that it's not a paved parking. It's kind of an informal parking lot that can be used for different purposes. So, so anyway, Andrew, thank you for. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for helping us put that event on. That was really, really great. It was awesome to have support. Um, I feel like it was one of the best events that the Village has put on, if not the best. Um, the, the entertainment was great. Uh, the participation was great. The people in the Village were great. I just made, it made all the effort really, really, really worth it. So. Well, and so on that topic of the parking in the area, because I know we had um, uh, our, our tent set up and we talked to a lot of visitors and all that were happy about the parking. What, what's the take on your merchants um, with parking? Is it As of right now, I've got about 20 surveys that I handed out to residents that I'm waiting to receive back. So I don't want to uh, speak on their behalf because they have an opportunity to say that themselves. But I think what Katarina said earlier is it's probably going to show that's what everyone's going to want. 
I'm excited about the conversations that we could have, like getting a little bit more specific about what's going to go in there. Um, I know that I, I've heard a few people say that the Chrysalis launcher getting relocated was a great idea. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, that's that's my opinion, but um, yeah, I, I think it's a lot of excitement. There's a huge buzz in the air. Um, yeah, very, very excited. So good. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Just looking at the surveys, I'm going through those that identified themselves as business owners, and the majority of them marked both parking and community garden as their preference. All righty. Um, Central CRA um, uh, presentation and guidance on CRA owned properties. Mr. Mignon uh, has done an extensive research uh, on this topic, so he'll give you a presentation, and then after that, we would like to hear your feedback and guidance. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so on... June 15, 2022, um, there was a motion by the board that, um, that was carried out 5-0 that CRA was no longer interested in being land lords mm -hmm. to, to properties. And within that um, motion as well, it was directed for the CRA manager to um, move forward with investigating the value and condition of the properties. Um, we have the three properties in the CCRA that we're looking to uh, possibly sell. Um, so let's see. So these are the areas. So each, um, these are each of the three houses here. And so they're pretty close proximity to each other. Um, we have 413 10th Avenue, 1013 6th Avenue, and actually that's 1021 6th Street Court East. So we'll start off with 413 10th Avenue which is number one over here. Um, and let's see here. So it's a um, 1120 square foot single family resident residence is a three plus two. Uh, lot size is about 5,300 square feet. Uh, we purchased it in 2006 for $135,000. Um, my evaluation of the property now, it's been, it's actually vacant now it had a tenant in it but it is vacant now and um, my opinion of value this is an internal evaluation that i did is approximately one hundred and twenty six thousand four hundred dollars so um oh, hold on mm -hmm. you say it's less than what we paid for it yes is it that that's bad? my opinion is that that bad a shape i have i'll have pictures on the next one i oh, think okay. it's in a uh, poor condition um, just visually, I went to each house visually. I didn't, there's no inspection, so I don't know what's beneath the walls, how it is mechanically, anything like that. But based on my visual inspection, I think it's, um, it needs some work. Um, and so that's, yeah, I believe that is the case. And so. Did you, did you base this on like comparables that have sold in that? Yeah, okay. So here's some pictures of uh, the property. As you can see, it needs, you know, some work inside. The kitchen needs to be updated. Um, the lawn is kind of. This is not why we would not want to be landlords. Yeah. <laughs> I think my my biggest question would be is condition of the roof and the AC, the four points that are going to be required to be in working condition in order to for someone to get a loan to buy it. And that's why the value is what it is, because I believe yeah, I don't probably think any individuals it doesn't do matter. Yeah, this would be an investor as an investment property. But that's kind of what we were hoping not to encourage. I thought we wanted to have. I didn't realize the property is that bad as it. I mean, it's not. It's a lot of it's cosmetic. Like I said, the roof and AC is. I don't know how old they are. You know, but. 
And and it it was purchased at the height right before the recession. So then the recession came. I'm a little bit worried about selling something that will end up being a blighted property. I'd rather at least get it brought up to snuff. Oh, that could be expensive. Those are part of the discussion. Yes, you're you're correct. Those were some of our concerns. So yeah, we're giving. I mean, so we have some options for you to give us feedback on. Okay. Yep. Okay. So and I just want to remind um, Mr. Mignon's background is in real estate. Um, so he was doing that in California and down here in Miami. So, <laughs> so I, his opinion is not it, definitely he, he, you know, that's part of his expertise. Yeah, it's, it's based well, on if I were your broker, I would say this would be a reasonable as it is now. That's the thing. It's mm -hmm. as is. We could sell this as a, an affordable house with a lower cost if the, if you was going to homestead it for a selected period of time and be de put it in the deed that we'll give it to you for 75,000 you've got to fix it up and you got to homestead it for 20 years or something like that. I'm just making this off of the cuff. Well, the problem that is that way that that would that would encourage somebody wait a minute. I, that's a good deal. I won't have to put 30, 40,000 in it, but I got skin in the game and we and we guaranteed that it's going to stay there. It can't be sold. I doubt it's insurable the way it is right now. But probably not. Probably. And so that kind of negates being able to sell it, unless you're going to just have a cash buyer that, right. and then you get what you get. Is this something that a Habitat or some kind of program might be interested in? That's one of the options. Um, we aren't letting you get there. Okay, it's okay. We'll <laughs> no, I love it. I, you guys are at exactly where we were right. debating, you know, what, you know, yeah. yeah. So that's this property. So uh, let's go move on to the next to get a little better as we go. This is, <laughs> oh, you suck. I started with that one. One quick question. <laughs> we will have to bid this, right? Mm -hmm. We will have to advertise it. Advertise it. Yes. So we just can't gift it to, uh, or. We still have to advertise, have to advertise it. it. So if. Open bid. Right. So somebody else could come in here, investor, and buy it. Well, well, depends on what the board does, what the board wants to do at that point. You can even give us guidance on what type of bidding you'd like. So do you want ideas? Do you want somebody to come? Like, you guys need to guide us on that, and we can do whatever you tell us. But it could be a nonprofit. It could be a lowest bidder. It could be the highest bidder. It's whatever direction the CRA board we wants. Have a, 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 is that a legal? Yeah, we don't have to sell it to the to the highest bidder, it is, we have to notice it. So even if, for example, if this board decided, hey, we want to give this property to Habitat, it can do that, but it has to put the notice out and allow other people to make offers to be considered. But it's there's no requirement for how it has to be disposed of. And then, you know, the pricing that's, if you're going out to bid, it may be lower than that. You may get a bidding war. Is you know that's kind of the market is what somebody's willing to sell their property for and what somebody's willing to buy their property for. <clears throat> and that's what the market is. Okay. So this is the the second property, which is um, ten thirteen Sixth Street East. This was the property that was used as a, by the PD. Um, it is a. So, um, it is. Okay. so anyway, um, so this one is a 3-2 as well. It was built in 1999. Its lot is approximately 6850 square feet. It was purchased in 2006. Um, and basically, it's in a little better shape. It's a little smaller lot and things like that. So I based this one at 140000 Seven hundred and thirty-one. What did we pay for? We paid one twenty-nine. And this is this is it. You can see it's in a little better shape. You know, the yards at least trimmed up and things like that. And it, it's it's not as bad. It has a nice garage in it and things like that. So um, that's okay. that one. And then the third one here is at ten twenty-one Sixth Street East Court East. It is the biggest of them all, uh, 1,496 square feet, three plus two, single family, built in 1999. 
The lot is approximately 6850 square feet and was purchased in 2006. And this one was purchased for $180,000. My opinion of value is about $164,000 for this one. Um, so all of them are approximately the same uh, as far as um, conditioning condition. This one is kind of in the middle, I guess you'd say. It's the biggest of them all, so it has a little more square footage and a little more lot size to it. So um, that was my opinion of value for that. Basically, I use some comps in the area and different techniques to come up with uh, the pricing. Um, there's not a lot for sale in the area that, that's comparable. So this is, this is a smaller unit. I believe it's been, um, it's on the next, I think a flipper bought it. And so it's on its next uh, part to be sold. Um, and they're asking $150,000. You got to keep in mind, too, this is the asking price, not what it's sold for. It's, you know, on the market right now for this amount of money. Um, it's been on the market. Um, 59 days. 59 days. Oh, okay, there it is. 59 days. So, um, Do things we are know, starting to say. Are there interior photos on that? There was not. Yeah. It's Zillow is feet. not very accurate. I'm just going to tell you. No, Zillow is not very accurate. <laughs> right. um, yeah, and that's a so one bedroom. One bath at 732 square feet. And so they're asking 205 per square foot. So, oh, God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Zillow's being sued because of the well, people Zillow being used in this. Business. <laughs> Now, that's uh, when but the 150 is houses. what they put it up for sale on. Yeah. It's not the Zillow it's estimate price. It's, it's <coughs> no, but they've got. You see, there's price. estimate. Okay, uh, 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 that's my way. Right. So, um, the second one, they just that's reduced the price on this one. This one, um, I would say, there was a couple interior shots not very flattering. So I would put it close to what our properties are um, and this one is at 163 so they're asking uh, I can't see that 196. 196 it's actually with the price reduction I think it's 194 per square foot and again that these are for sale this is what people were you know and this has been on the market for a hundred and plus days so they probably sold it or put it on the market prior to are escalating uh, interest rates. <laughs> yeah. So that's part of it as well. But you know, it's still s setting on the market for a while. Yeah. Um, this is a, a piece of property um, that they have up for sale at 65,000. And um, it's approximately, it's, it's been on the market about 80 days. And they're looking at $10.65 per square foot for just the land itself. So, this thing keeps All right, so now we're getting to the recently sold properties. So um, the property here is it sold for $95 per square foot. So the total it sold for was $100,000. It was 1120 square feet with three bedroom and one bath. So this is actually been sold um so that's they got the hundred thousand dollars so that's at 95 bucks a square foot oh, sorry the second one the one next uh down is 94 dollars a square foot and it sold for one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and it was 1274 square feet three bedroom two baths so it's closer to a comp um of ours and you can see the it was ninety four dollars a square foot did you look at the interiors on that they didn't have the, any interior pictures on those. Is that can make a huge difference because that house looks like it's been well maintained and everything right hmm. so the third one here sold for this is the higher price one is sold for 132 per square foot and I believe you know they had 
um, fixed it up before they sold it. And so it, I think it looks a little bit different than that. I think they, you know, did some minor cosmetic stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it sold at 132 a square foot, three bedroom, one bath, 1,056 square feet. So that's comparable. And then uh, a piece of land for land value um, sold. It's uh, 0.26 acres, sold for $70,000. So that's approximately six dollars and twenty cents per square foot. Okay. So, um, so the summary of the report is all three uh, vacant residential properties are in poor to moderate condition based on our visual inspections. Uh, staff has reached a value opinion of the properties in the range of one hundred twenty-five to one hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars with a total of the three properties about $434,000. Um, selling, you know, obviously puts it back on the tax rolls. So, you know, um, that's a good thing for us. Um, we recommend that if we do look at selling these properties that we obtain, even if we don't basically, is that we obtain an estimate and proceed with removal of disposing and disposing of furniture and other items, a deep cleaning of residence, uh, mowing uh, and trash removal from some of the properties and any needed trimming of the trees. Um, also, we recommend before doing that, maybe to have a physical inspection of the properties done so we can look at if there's any structural or mechanical issues with that property as well. Um, the possible options, this is what we've kind of thrown around, is you can s try to advertise the properties and sell them as is in their current condition. Uh, we can advertise the properties for sale as is with minimal enhancements. That's like paint and flooring and cleanup, you know, spruce it up a little bit, maybe an appliance, take a couple appliances, things like that, just small, small changes. Um, Another thing is a complete, that the CR does a complete rehabilitation of the property and advertise it for sale after we rehab the whole thing. Uh, another is to complete rehabilitation of the properties and continue to own and lease for affordable rates. We're here because that's not what you wanna do. You don't wanna be landlords, but that, that still is an option if anybody wants to change their mind about it. And then the other one is to create and publish a request for proposal uh, this will give the developers and nonprofits an opportunity to, um, to submit proposals based on a predetermined criteria that's within the RFP. And a couple of other market items to consider as we sell this is that the current market interest rates are climbing. So, you know, it's kind of slowed and cooled the housing market down a little bit, and they seem to be staying on the market a lot longer. So we just ask, you know, for your guidance on the next steps, um, if we want to sell these properties or not. Um, okay, I, I've got a suggestion because it kind of goes into the next uh, item here, B, um, with Habitat. Uh, one of the things that came up with the uh, event um, over in Ward 5, the, CR, the CRA event, um, was that people... Uh, and this is it commonly happens is that uh, they're talking about like social issues like like health and, and a meeting room and all these things that that people ask for and it's kind of stuff the city doesn't really do um, you know um, but but people commonly request it so uh, and the one thing I was thinking about is that there there's obviously plans to sell City Hall and not only this but the library and the library had previously been, um, uh, Amy Stein brought this up years ago, um, that the library possibly to sell it, uh, Commissioner, County Commissioner Amy Stein. And, and the talk at the time, too, was that the library could actually be broke up into two, instead of having one central, it would work to have two, like most of the libraries are smaller campuses. And... You know, when we're talking about things that we could do on 9th to <coughs> enhance 9th, uh, I'm sorry, um, Martin Luther King, 
to enhance it. And, and the, they kept talking about like com co community meeting rooms, educational programs, and immediately I was thinking library, like a library. So we have the Bryant Comments site that I kind of looking at that as being an opportunity for maybe um, a library site it, it can contact the county ahead of time, put this in there, hold on to it for that. And then, um, but with Habitat for Humanity, like these homes would be, to see if they were interested in taking them for rehabbing. Um, just, just, just something out there, but, but it, for what, what the people were wanting, it's like, I don't see the CRA being able to build a community center, <coughs> stopping the community center. And, and but but that's what libraries do I I, <clears throat> I think what they were speaking of is more of a community center with a lot of services other than just the library um, I shouldn't say just the library other than only having the library there um, and I think the city were probably I, I don't know but I think city were probably going to be moving something like that in that direction and you're right the CRA doesn't really yeah. do that but I, the homes I, my mindset was home ownership I wanted to see homesteaded um, properties and since we have these three um, it's a great opportunity to you know have that happen and, but uh, that's but Habitat Humanity would have the capability of coming in, mm -hmm. rehabbing these homes, and then giving them to the people we want to give them to. Yeah, it kind of it kind of solves all our yeah. problems at once. And and, and and on top of that, Habitat's not going to just give it, rehab it, and give it to them. They yeah. yeah, they they are going to work with that family and get them find you know, help them maintain or sustain. You right. know, the home and um, I have to say I, I kind of appalled and <laughs> was kind of hypocritical that we own properties that look like this <laughs> so I really would like to see them rehabbed and I think you're right I don't necessarily be, want to be in there picking out flooring and all that um, I'd like to see um, I think the, the habitat is a great idea we're helping a great organization they are gonna do they they get to the right clients it'll encourage the uh, the the home ownership and I, I I definitely like that better than having a, a landlord buy them or I, I they can't we, I don't I think it's wrong for us to let them stay in this condition because right. uh, they're awful I mean that's bad and I think I think those values may be a little higher than what the market would really do because right now nobody wants to do work because they can't get contractors to do anything mm -hmm. and the stuff that needs work is staying on the market a lot longer than even other stuff and you know you start talking about insurance and and lending on it I just I think habitat would be a great opportunity um, and the Bryant Commons thing I think are we going to discuss that later or are we doing that I, now I just to, to talk into it because it, it kind of segued uh, the, the habitat uh, yeah uh, you know I that's next on the agenda is what to do with that but I was thinking rather than giving up an assemblage at an opportune time because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that the next year that that library will be on the market <laughs> you know it's it's going to happen well I I I know I I don't know I know that there are entities out there that are talking about some plans and I don't know I don't know if it's at Bryant Commons I'm not sure exactly where it is I think you've talked to them haven't you but the, the oh. Brain and Housing Authority, I think, is, is looking at exactly what you're talking about and exactly what you're talking about. So I hate to give up the assemblage, like you said, um, and until things come to fruition. Until we know. Because, you know, it's not that a library is going to offer the services, but they offer a room that right. other people but, can use for yes. the services mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. For free. I, I, I no. understand that, yeah. But I'm, okay. I guess I have eyes on something. Would it help to continue to the presentation from Habitat and then maybe we can have a holistic conversation about mm -hmm. direction and feedback? Mm -hmm. Ms. And, and I want to oh, add sorry. to, I'm sorry, Chairman. Um, when you 
heard them talking about the community center, they were really kind of talking about the west side because 13th Ave on the east side has has all of that. Yeah, but that's all the way down. Right. That's what I'm saying. It, they kind of want to oh, be yeah. on the other side of First Street, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I assumed that we, we wanted it right in that general area. Yeah. I just don't know if that is. I'm not sure I know where Bryant Commons is. We okay. will have okay. maps and everything. Okay. So yeah, just let me go ahead and go to the right. So I want to thank Mr. Mignon because I know he yeah. spent a lot of time uh, with doing this research and giving this presentation. Um, but we do have here um, the CEO, President and CEO of Habitat uh, for Humanity from Manatee County. And he was going to uh, give this presentation to the CCRA Advisory Board first uh, last week, but then Hurricane Nicole happened, so we had to cancel the meeting. So they have not had an opportunity to see that and give their feedback. But since it was already printed on the agenda, um, we at least wanted you to hear from him and uh, the recommendations. All right, thank you. It's, uh, it's an honor to be, be here and be able to speak with you. Let's see if I can get this going here. So uh, I welcome the, to, you know, the discussion about the, the properties that uh, Chris just shared, but let me just talk about this first and then we can have that holistic conversation if that's okay. So this is the property at the uh, on MLK and 3rd Street. It's uh, currently seven lots. Five of them are vacant and two have homes on them uh, currently. And our plan would be to combine all seven of these lots to, let's see if I get this area. Can you identify the streets? It's on nine. So our, our plan would be to combine uh, these seven lots uh, to one continuous lot and to build 22 three-bedroom two-bath townhomes on this property each of these townhomes would be approximately 1400 to 1500 square feet and uh, they each each of these units would come with a one-car garage in inside their own unit and it would also come with one uh, parking space in addition to the interior parking. So there would be two cars per unit in this space. There'd be 46 total parking lots or parking spots, one interior and, and enough for one exterior for each of these units. Uh, this, this plan, uh, as it's laid out here, it meets the, uh, as close as we can tell, uh, would meet the current form-based code uh, so that um, you know, we wouldn't have to do anything extraordinary if uh, this was approved that we think of. The uh, the long continuous building on MLK is that would be a three-story townhouses, and the lower <coughs> units, the eight lower units, would be uh, two-story units based on the the zone uh, that they're in, uh, re meeting those requirements. The um, the the feature of these for us would be that it would provide. Uh, affordable uh, home ownership for residents that uh, may not otherwise be able to afford a single family home or a single family home isn't uh, appropriate for them. These, these homes would be uh, built with uh, metal roofs, they'd be super insulated so they'd be highly efficient and they would uh, have no very minimal uh, exterior uh, upkeep and the, the upkeep would be taken care of by an HOA that they would all be contributing to and would be managed mm -hmm. uh, professionally so that down the road, you know, the, the outsides would be, would be kept looking nice. And uh, the, these homeowners would own these townhomes, so they would purchase them and own each of their own homes and their own units. And uh, Habitat for Humanity, what we do, as, as uh, I've shared with you before and I think you're familiar with, these, the homeowners partner with us to put 300 hours of sweat equity into their own homes. They, they partner and work alongside with us. And we give them a, uh, they, their income uh, criteria has to be 50 to 80% of the area AMI. So they have to be in that kind of lower income range to qualify. We give them a 30 year 0% mortgage uh, on these properties. 
and their payments can be no more than 30% of their income. So that keeps them uh, affordable uh, for them. And then we also build into them a, a, a right of first refusal so that if they decide to sell this unit, then we are the Habitat becomes the, the only one really that can purchase that property back and that's what we do. And we would clean it up, put it back into new condition and sell it to another homeowner that's in our program. So, you know, currently right now we have 58 families on a pre-qualified waiting list and we have 80 inquiries a month from families in our community who are looking for affordable, not just affordable housing, but affordable home ownership options. And so we're uh, trying to come up with ways that we could creatively increase our capacity and meet the, the great uh, demand in our community. So. Uh, so that's uh, that's the the gist of this uh, this project. See if I this just just a rendering with some of the trees and uh, around it, and this is um, an elevation picture of what uh, these these would be very modern, um, well built uh, townhomes. These are block. What's that? these block so they they will be blocked they will be solid concrete walls so either block or they'll be solid poured walls lifted with you know um, the appropriate firewalls in between so yeah. what would be the purchase price I know you're going to do the financing 30-year finance, mm -hmm. but what it would, what would be the actual dollar dollar amount yeah so finance? what what we do is we sell all of our homes at the appraised value so they would be appraised and whatever that appraised value is that's what they purchase the homes for that does a couple of things one is it keeps the, the the sale price fair so that there's not you know we we're not just coming up with some kind of random number and it also helps with the property values in the community because we're not selling these for below market value lowering everyone else's you know uh, property so at this time you know it's we we're really getting the correct comps and seeing what these would sell for it, it's it's a little bit of you know because this would be a year and a half out from today <coughs> but, you know we would hope that they would be in roughly in the 260 to 280 range okay and if that's the case these mortgages would be about nine hundred dollars a month taxes insurance everything included that'd be about nine hundred a month yeah I'm sorry. You mentioned that there were going to be ten roofs, ten like uh, ten, what type of roofing? There'll be ten? metal roofs. Metal. So what? Yeah, we put metal roofs on all of our buildings, our, all of our homes that are the longest lasting. They hold hold up the best to storms, and very importantly for lower income residents, is that they uh, don't have to be replaced very often, mm -hmm. and they, they will last their lifetime hopefully. Yeah, so keeps the cost low for them. Um, can I see the aerial of the actual property one more time? Sure. Time to get a good feel of how far. So, so the five properties on the north, mm -hmm. um, they're vacant lots, and then the two uh, to the side on third, those are their homes. Yeah. And they're being their rentals right now. Uh, we've asked that they are month to month, so that whenever you all decide whatever you want to do with them, we'll give them obviously some notice to have time. But there's no contract as of now. Yeah, and we we uh, we we had a thorough discussion about whether we would just rehab those homes and and bring them back to like new condition and sell them. But when we could put eight units mm -hmm. in place of two then it, it to, for us it made more sense to do that and if i'm thinking where this is that home on the corner really it's next to the church um church of christ yeah yeah i got you i see where it is where is lincoln park lincoln village is to the right the village, further east yeah, that way. so it's okay. a few blocks east is your proposal to uh, purchase it or are you wanting it? Well, of course, our proposal would be that you would graciously give this property to us so that we could do this, uh, <laughs> do this project. But, w you know, we're, we're looking to partner with the, the CRA. And, and originally, my first presentation um, to you was that was, uh, we, 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 were, it was, we were reached out to by this board or by uh, Katerina 
with a certain amount of money to do rehab repairs in the CRA. And because we're already doing a lot of that, I came back with a proposal that initially said, well, why don't we split the cost? You give us that money and we'll match it and we'll build three new homes on vacant lots that you have. And that was how this whole you know, conversation got started. So through those, those discussions, this piece of property has come back you know, as being a, a possibility. So to be able to build more homes uh, or you know, residences on this is something that we are very interested in. So. Yeah. Did you hear the presentation before about selling the properties? Did you have any quick thoughts on those other five properties? Three. Three, three. three well, properties. Well, those three properties, yes. Yeah. So my, here's my quick take on that is that if, if we were to, if you were to give all three of those properties to us, this is what we would do. We would go in and completely rehab them, put a new roof, metal roof on them, new windows, uh, re redo the entire interiors of the house, bring those homes back to new condition and then we would sell them to a homeowner for the same things that I just told you. We would, they, would, they would partner with us, put 300 hours of sweat equity into it when we're rehabbing it, and um, they would do our, we would have residents in our program that would be part of it. They'd get a 0% mortgage, and, uh, they, and they would purchase it just like any other Habitat home. Mm -hmm. So the, the, per, the person purchasing them will, would never really truly have home ownership oh sure they would because okay. they're buying the home just like any other home but we're the lender you have a right to first refusal that's right purchases. So that's right so if so let's say 20 years from now they buy it off of us and what we do is we get the home appraised and they and we buy it off of them for the appraised value so equity that they've earned in the house is theirs but we get to buy that home back for the appraised value and put another habitat family into that home so that it keeps that house in a in an affordable housing forever really is what it does for it does it forever so they get to keep the appreciation and they get to they keep, keep the, the appreciation, appreciation or of course heirs. absolutely yeah. because you know part of uh, habitat's uh mission and our heart is to help people rise out of poverty right. and to be able to and home ownership is one of the greatest ways as you know right. for anybody to exactly. get wealth in the in and in, in generationally so it would be atrocious for us to you know not, not grant not them that, that. Yeah. i mean that's what this is really all about yeah so can i ask one quick Actually, question Barnaby's waiting. well i'll go ahead and ask your question because i'm oh okay uh my question would be do you have any kind of when someone buys it, are there requirements that they keep it in a certain condition? Uh, yes, uh, there is. Just like you know, uh, a typical mortgage company, <coughs> would, you know, most mortgages have built in there somewhere that you agree to keep the house in a livable, maintainable condition. Um, so, you know, that's what the the game plan is. And you know, I mean, I can't play out. Uh, all kinds of weird scenarios yeah. but uh but you if know. a window gets broken they can't just plywood it they're of gonna have not. to no because code it. enforcement wouldn't yeah. allow that anyways okay right? so and and the other thing is we manage yeah. we maintain the uh and manage the mortgages so mm -hmm. you know we're the ones that uh service the mortgages okay. and we we stay and the other benefit that we have is we stay in contact with these families f basically forever so if they get into trouble making payments, it's our phone that rings, and we're the ones that work with them to get them caught up and to keep them in their homes. And so in the last five years, we've had one foreclosure mm -hmm. out of 140 homes at 70 active mortgages. So we have a pretty good track record of keeping families current. Yeah. That's awesome. Well. I'm very familiar with Habitat for Humanity. I think that you all do God's work here on Earth, actually. Well, thank you. Um, at this point in time, I, I would like to see us hold on to this Bryant Commons property because of some of the other things that may be coming down the pike. But I'm more than happy to make a motion that the three CRA properties that the CRA owns that we've talked about today that, uh, and Mr. Rudisil, I may need your help with it, that we instruct staff to pursue the opportunity of having 
our staff work with Habitat for Humanity um, with those three properties. So how would you like me to say that? I think that's probably enough for, I think mm -hmm. we know what the board is looking for there. Negotiate some kind of arrangement and bring it back to, for consideration. Right, because I, looking at what we, the pictures that we saw, for us to be able to sell them, we're gonna have to put a lot more money into those properties. Mm -hmm. And we're probably gonna be getting in line and waiting for everyone else that's already got in line to have work done on their properties. I think that this will make it so that um, the properties go to appropriate homeowners that have community sanction by the way of the, the Habitat for Humanity program and that we're not holding on to those properties and that those properties don't continue to add blight in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's my motion, that's Mr. Second. Chairman. <clears throat> And just to be clear, is it is it the board's intent that the properties be given to Habitat, or? I'm I'm thinking that we were going to have to put a heck of a lot of money in them to bring them up to speed, um, to be able to to make them available to be sold. I mean, I'm not a realtor, but I do know a couple around here. Well, I, I would say that's kind of what our mission is. I realize we're not a for-profit or landlord or whatever. I think this is exactly what we're trying to do. And so I can justify in my mind giving it because anything that they have to pay to us is going to just either increase the price to a homeowner or maybe less of a thing. And these I'm fine with. Are I'm go fine back with on it. The, on I'm the fine tax with the tax roll. That's exactly what At, I want to in, in with the improved state, mm -hmm. which means that it they, you know, a higher evaluation probably. Right. Um, and, and it sounds like we were only going to net one, a hundred thousand plus each. Um, if that. Minus cost. Minus if cost. That. So I don't think you'd be netting that. I don't think, I you, don't think you would either. No. From what I, I saw, all of that to fix it right. up. So, I mean, but, but that should be something that, that our director should work out with Habitat. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just clarification, Mr. Rudasel, do, I need to adver do we need to advertise it at the same time, or do we first negotiate, come back with something, and then we advertise it? I think we just go ahead and advertise it, and then meanwhile we can be we, working on the I agree. Terms. Awesome. Okay. That was my intent and in the motion that I made. Okay. I'll second. second. Oh, you seconded second. it? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, motion is second. Uh, any more discussion? I would like to say something. Um, this is in my ward. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things when I was running, I, I felt like a neighborhood can be lifted if there were more homeowners. And at this point in time, I, in most of the streets are, I, I, I know saying 70%, 80%, they're rental. And, and I think that has a lot to do with how complacent we, you know, can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not mine, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll, I'll move out <coughs> at night and at midnight, and, and they'll lose me, and I won't ever have to answer to them. So, so home ownership is just extremely high on the list, and a program such as Hab Habitat being able to do this, I get now. See, I get all emotional. <laughs> um, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Qu uh, another question. I don't know who. Uh, so the Bryant Commons assemblage has that we had somebody was it H uh, was it North Star or HGG? It was North Star, and I'm glad you brought it up so because are they, are I they just out. I, I had mentioned it in one of the meetings, but very quickly, and I keep hearing a rumor mill, and I would actually like to go on record that it's not the CRA board changing plans and not doing what the previous CRA, uh, central CRA board did um, before this RCRA was formed. So North Star Development has uh, declined. Uh, is no, as you remember last year, mm -hmm. we honored the agreement that had been made. Um, they had gone out to an RFP and North Star Development USA had been selected in order to provide senior affordable housing, 53 units on the Bryan Commons property. 
Um, and last year, North Star Development applied for tax credits. They did not get it from the, from the state. So they were going to reapply this year. So they contacted me about a month ago or so, and they said based on the construction costs, and they, they used a different um, uh, company to kind of look at the details of the site, um, that it didn't make sense. It would, they would be losing money. It, the site was too small, and the construction costs were so high that they respectfully had to, they are the ones that declined and have left. So it's not the CRA board that is changing anything. So I want to go on record and I will, you know, whoever is watching this or help us spread the word that we are, you know, we, we've kept our promise. We tried to keep as much as we could from previous board, but this was not your decision. This is what the developer left. And now we have an assemblage that we need to figure out what are the current needs of the community and how to best serve the community. So when they were offering that on Bryant Company, were they asking for anything other than just the property? They wanted the property uh, gifted to them? Correct. And did they were asking any, any other incentives? Uh, no, I believe it was just the land. Okay. Because, you know, we just did the, the 600000 or whatever to the other, so I don't know if that all changed because of the, the economy and so forth. So we were looking at a comparison, and they say, no, they're not going to do it. So that's, that deal's dead, and I don't think anybody else is going to step the plate because that was on the books for like five years, and that's what I questioned. It's why we were honoring something that was five years ago. Originally, you thought I was <coughs> against the project. I wasn't. I was just saying, wait a minute, this is five years ago, so let's change. And so that was the only argument I had. So you're talking about 22 units versus 53 units, which they say they're not going to do. Um, but those were rentals versus a for, versus home ownership, also. Right. With this proposal, for example. But aren't we better with home ownership versus rentals? Mm -hmm. yeah, you just said it. I say it. I don't know what the rest of the board says, but I think you're always better with home ownership because, like I said, the old thing is I've never washed a car when I took a rental back because I don't care. You know, I'm not going to spend five dollars to wash it because that's their job. It's part of it. Now it's probably built into the cost, so maybe I'm wrong. But in other words, the the, the theory is that you don't take care. Of, that's why we have problems in the, in the Bradenton is because a lot of investor owns properties and they just trash it. They don't care. They don't have any pride in that. And so I'm always for home ownership first. Well, so I would I would like for us to you, we can bring it up to the next meeting or whatever you want to do, but. Um, I think we move forward on the three units, but this this units, I'm, I, I would be in favor of going ahead, but if nobody wants to do it, they can do it the next meeting or think about it, whatever. I mean, I agree about the home ownership completely. I, I just think that we've got this as an assemblage, and with, I, I just am not yet ready to give up on, I like it, I like the project, I just don't know if I'm ready to, I, I, I definitely want to do the three. Um, but I'm just, I'm just not there yet. What if, and I'll ask this gentleman, what if we could take out one of the units and make it a, uh, instead of tw 22 units, 20 units, and one of them be uh, a uh, community center for just that area or whatever with a mini library? I'm just thinking outside the box here. Clubhouse. Clubhouse, et cetera, that, hey, you know, this community can come together, at least 20 of them, could, could, is that a possibility? You could think about that and come back? I could think about that, but that really would be a question for, like, what we did is we, we built, designed this around the form-based code, which is very specific. Well, about, that would have to be addressed, right? And that would have to, and that's for a, a, a much But would you deal. guys entertain that? Um, certainly. All the questions. Okay. Yeah. That's what I, mean, I suggest would be come back to us uh, I'm, I'm with a, a uh, proposal to, to incorporate that in there to at least these 20 would have that, and if they saw that, they say, wow, that was really great. Can we do it over here? And we would do it over here. Uh, again, it may be, you know, it's not gonna be very big, but it's gonna be, it, do, do you have the ability to, to be able to maintain it and staff it? And So that that's where we would not do that. Right. So, so our, our, gonna be asking our mission is to provide affordable home ownership. That's our mission. So if there was some kind of a, a combined 
working together with with all of you about some you know some homes and then uh, a community room or something we, that would have to be separated and it could be part of the project to build it which we would cooperate with but the maintenance of that and the, who runs it and who opens it and who closes it and all those things uh, would not would be that something be part of the HOA could that be incorporated in HOA I, so I, 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 we're getting I, way off like we're, we're into the way off of yeah. you. so anyways I, if I, would, I may if I, I may I recommend would say no okay. that could, could could simplify the conversation right. uh, because um, the, the homeowners uh, are not with our program so there's several discussions going so I think keeping it's our only assemblage at this point in time it's actually 1.2 acres um, we can do multiple things but I think once we bring all the players on the table see if the county is interested in doing something see if habitat is interested in doing something we can do a combination of both potentially 14 units on the front and then a community center library on the south side so, but that would take multiple people so that's something absolutely the CRA can look into more, um, and we will. Not now that I know that you're all interested in potentially a combination or something, we'll we'll bring the players together. And we vote on the motion. Yes. Okay, so uh, the motion was for the CRA properties <coughs> um, to go to Habitat, correct? Mm -hmm. The three. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. <coughs> okay. So, um, Bryant comments will put on hold, and then uh, C, Second Amendment, reinstate the Ground Lease Opportunity Fund, Florida One, LLC. Uh, at the last meeting, Mr. Diario presented, uh, made a request, and um, the board instructed our attorney uh, to draft a Second Amendment and, and restatement to the Ground Lease. Um, Based on the discussion that you had, Mr. Rudisell has put together uh, what you have in your packet, and I also we also discussed about doing uh, a quick memo so that you all had the information of what the previous agreements are, so that you kind of know the timelines and the requirements in addition to this second amendment. Hello, <clears throat> I'm Peter Diadio. Thank you for taking the time to. Um, look at the Second Amendment that we discussed at the last meeting. Thank you, Mr. Rudisell, for the draft. And um, uh, I hope that you'll approve moving forward with that um, today. I did bring to pass out to Karen an updates. I know you like to be updated on what we've been doing. If you don't mind, I'll hand this to Karen. Just to report briefly um, from the last meeting, uh, as you know, we did uh, present our site plan improvement plan to Public Works, as well as the same plan for the building to form base code um, for their compliance. Uh, we've also um, have had two rounds of comments that we've wor working back with um, both groups, the zoning a board and uh, public works uh, we've also um, had additional comments from the Department of Transportation where we have the right in and right out um, cr um, access <coughs> um, we have had um, some concerns when we went to the state regarding um, floodplain where currently there is no floodplain um, they believe the lot is within floodplain. So we're reworking with that to see how we can accommodate those maps that are not FEMA maps or somebody else's maps, state maps. And um, the Public Works has asked us for some additional survey work down 2nd Street and some additional survey work on, on the site, which um, actually today the Terminus Survey group is will give me a schedule when they can actually go out excuse me didn't yes. FEMA already come in and determine where our floodplains were I thought we had this on for insurance purposes mr. off do you remember that I don't recall that no okay. I, thought, I thought they did for and they, they actually increased the areas and it put some people in a floodplain 
which was a concern because the public was concerned that there was now being a floodplain that had their entrance going out. So I thought those maps were already designated. Well, according to the state, the, um, we, of course, did too. We followed the FEMA maps. But um, okay. there's, uh, according to the state, new maps that are better than the FEMA maps, and that's what we were surprised about. But what puts the entire lot in the, um, the floodplain. But rather than going into the long dissertation about floodplain in the fringe and what everyone thinks it is, I need a little more time with our engineers to decide if it's going to affect us so dramatically that we'll uh, have a problem with the project. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you know when they will They will know or they probably don't say well, no, they'll, uh, they'll know soon. I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, I've got, I have a meeting with them only every day and I'm hoping by the end of the week. But part of that is the survey. So today we'll know about the scheduling, the survey, which is um, uh, part of that survey may, we may need to change the state maps that's precedent to the, the yeah. FEMA map uh, because there's, um, there's some conflict. Uh, but uh, we're, we're proceeding through that, those items to try to keep us on track. The largest item that we just went through today was that, that dumpster that continues to be a, a problem <laughs> or where that's supposed to be on the site. McDonald's has agreed to use their own private service and I believe Tim from building uh, from Public Works Department will now accept its location subject to a formal request but uh, at least by a text message within the last hour um, agreeing on uh, the location as long as McDonald's agrees and proves that they will agree to pick up the trash themselves. Um, we're working with two additional local tenants, a pizza and a hairdresser, and uh, we'll keep you posted if we can uh, proceed along those lines with either the two, one's from Parrish and one's from um, uh, Sarasota, uh, both uh, Excuse me. great operators. Did you say a hairdresser, like one person? You weren't talking like, like a supercuts or anything? Like uh, well, we looked at supercuts and we looked at sports So you're clubs. now talking about a hairdresser? Uh, well, no, the, well, I, no, it's, um, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I uh, paraphrased it incorrectly. <laughs> the, um, the tenant brand, I did not bring the, her card with me. I've met her personally. Uh, so it's Coral, one please, P-E-L. No, no, she has three stores now, and her expansion, she just opened up into the new plaza where Lowe's is in Parrish, and she has one location in, um, in, uh, in Sarasota, and she touts a brand. It's uh, more of a license rather than a franchise, um, and she has an operator, a, um, a uh, stylist that lives in this area. So I suspect that it'll be a 2,000 square foot store and I suspect there'll be, I don't know, from five to 10 stylists in the store, mm -hmm. um, but yet we have not so moved. What's the name of her? Uh, her name is Carol Please. Not her name, the name of her business. Yeah, I'll have to get that to you because I don't want to misstate it. Um, it I thought we talked about having an African-American barber or hairstylist, no. and that does not sound at, at one point, he was talk. We were. He was talking to Supercut. So it was okay. Like a, 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 it was that, and then you at know, for styling, and sports styling club. for everyone. That's know. right. That's yeah. the same That's kind of thing. That's what I thought. But. Yeah. This is the same kind of thing. It's a uh, when when I can move further along, I'll I'll be able to provide you with more information, and you can visit the stores and see if it's something that's, you know, pr appropriate for, for this uh, tenant mix. I believe it is, um, but. You can just email That's subject us. to your <coughs> email us all the name. I'm sorry? You can email us all Yeah, I think it's so called Cutting it Loose, K-U-T-T-I-N-G-L-O-O-S-E. But I just want to confirm that because sometimes I yeah. speak a little fast or I say something a little bit wrong and I don't want to um, cause any confusion. So well, once I'll, you I'll send you over the, uh, her, you know, her card and her brand. Uh, and so that you could take a look at that. To all of us, yeah. I'll send it to everyone, yeah. But uh, I think uh, you know, we, may, uh, we may get some progress mo um, motion there because Supercuts has rejected the site. Sports Clips is still on the fence, but they're not um, rushing in. Gotcha. 
Uh, so in addition, uh, um, uh, the South Water Management uh, Resource Management Permit, that, that's what we started on and we're coming up with this floodplain concern. And uh, this, um, that's pretty much for my update since the last uh, presentation a few weeks ago. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just was curious, I see Robbins here, about the floodplain maps. He was saying something about different maps. Do you know? Um, yeah, about a year ago, right. the city adopted the new flood insurance rate maps. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was about a year ago. And I don't think we're not in the building permit uh, review part of this. You're still doing SIP, correct? You're still doing your site improvement plan? So he's working with the Water Management District on drainage plans. Uh, but as far as building is concerned, I don't, we haven't applied the flood plain issue yet. That would be done at building permit. But is it the issue just accommodating drainage on site? Or? Uh, the issue is the um, state, uh, while we had our review from uh, Florida Water Management, um, brought up that uh, the FEMA maps are not correct. That shows um, that we're not in the floodplain. Okay. And he said they show that we're in 100% of the floodplain. Maybe okay. you have some updated maps. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can take a look at that and, and get with your architect. But that's, yeah, that'll apply when you apply for a building permit. But if they have some other issues with, you know, I can run and check on what the what uh, flood rate area you're in at this point. But yeah. he's having problem getting F dot to prove that. Uh, we're having problems uh, uh, approving our stormwater management plan because they believe that we need to apply to a different standard because of the uh, because of the maps. Okay. So All right. Well, I'll go. I can go and check yeah, on that. Great. We can work. We can work with your engineer on that. I mean, I don't. Yeah. It is what it is. Sure. I mean, whatever flood zone you're in, you're in. So. Sure. I, I know. I, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay. As far as the building construction is concerned, but if he needs that information for, it. I mean, and that's just public information yeah. in terms of what um, zone you're in. So. Okay. It possibly could be D. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, the uh, is there an action on that lease then? I mean, it's up to the board. You I, have... I, I don't know where we're at. What? Yeah, we would like you to make a motion to accept the extension that Scott Rudisell um, drafted so that we will have the time we need to work through all these items. I'll make the motion. To accept the extension as presented. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, let's make sure. Up Pam's for discussion, yeah. Pam, did you have any discussion on accepting no. this? Okay. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to have a, 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 a quick comment. Um, <clears throat> where do we stand, if anybody knows, with your site being used for the um, uh, hurricane uh, debris, and how much longer is that going to uh, be there, and what possible delays will that cause you for site preparation? Well, it was <laughs> only on a coincidence. I happen to run into the FEMA people on the site, of course, I'm there occasionally, and I asked that question, how long would they be on the site? Uh, you might notice they've cleared a lot of the debris. Yeah, they're, quite a bit, yeah, they're hauling off the mulch. Okay. Yeah, and I do understand there's a second round, which I'm not sure how long that's going to take, or right. they don't either, because... Well, but isn't that just our city debris? And as I understand yeah. it, our FEMA pickup's been done. So they should be hauling that off, and there, it should not show up again because <coughs> it's just the county that's that's doing their second. Right, right. Um, and city of Bradenton, we got ours done. And it looked to me like they're hauling off the ground. Yeah, they are. Yeah. But but yeah. I thought I thought they was going to do a second. There's people in the city that said that they still haven't had a, a pickup a second. Then they need to call it, because right. the FEMA people, I believe, are gone with the city because we had two passes through the city mm -hmm. by our FEMA okay. contractors and now it's on us if there's something if people didn't put it out 
promptly, mm -hmm. or FEMA missed a street. Again, they're not from here. They may have just missed, you but know. If, if FEMA is gone and that happened, then the city will have to pick it up. Where would the city take it? To the, where were they on? The, the landfill. The okay. So the site, as soon as they get the mulch off there, it's yours uh, for site preparation. Uh, that would be great. Uh, the FEMA person today told me that there was a second round, but he may not understand right. where we're talking about. Well, I, if I, I'm curious if it's county, if it's the county FEMA dumping stuff there, that should not be happening because they do not have a contract with us to do that. Again, I, I didn't ask those questions because I didn't think it was in my purview. But she, he indicated that he thought there was a second round. I'm getting the this, scooter face again, right? Is that what you're going to tell me? <laughs> yeah. This particular with you. round, um, he gave me the understanding that he should be done by January. He should not no, that's not acceptable that. because yeah. that's that's another 45 days. Could, who who could check on this to make sure that this is not well, an open? Let me issue? just text Mr. McClellan and see if we get an answer. Well, and that's got nothing to do with the. It has nothing to do with this extension. Well, I, I think it does because, you know, you just added 45 more days of not not being able to use the property. I just well, wanted it on record that if we either way, it's going to cost you time. Well, just it shouldn't anymore? because he doesn't have a site improvement right, right, permit right. yet. Right, we're still working on paperwork. And, and he no just asked for an extension on minute, getting five answers coming the site improvement here. permit. He, he doesn't, but that is site the, that's in process, right? The yes. site permit is in process. What's left to do? Well, it's going through these kinds of comments that uh, I just brought up. Okay. Uh, and when we can overcome the balance of the comments from the city, then I think they'll, they'll uh, okay. And uh, we are, uh, we've got a, a few weeks before I can give them a full report. One was the, uh, the dumpster, uh, one is the new survey, and then uh, the recalculation of the stormwater management plan with the new light of the floodplain um, being 100% of the site versus none of the site, which is what FEMA, FEMA maps have. Those are our challenges right now. Okay. Well, and, 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 but we don't know that, that, that what, what concerns me is the, the, the timeline that. Well, if we get our permit uh, by the end of the year, then they might be in our way. If it takes us to February, hopefully they'll be gone. Okay. Well, let's get this uh, at least. Just wanted on record that th there's some stuff that's unknown right at this time. You know, we can go ahead and vote on this. That's not the issue. I made a motion in a second, but I always wanted on the record and in the record that these issues are uh, <coughs> could cause this project a problem, and they're with outside his control. So I, do, I wouldn't want somebody to say, well, you didn't do it on this date, this date. Well, I didn't have permission. You know, I can't tell FDOT what to do, and I can't tell uh, anybody else what to do. So, okay, well, Karen, make sure we have minutes to say. Yeah, just make sure you got minutes to cover the to cover the, the, okay. the conversation. Okay. Yeah. That these things are a concern as of today, and they could potentially be something that he might want to come back and say, "This was not my fault." Okay. Just Very make good. it. Yeah. Very uh, thank good. you. That's all I'm asking. Okay, so a motion a second on the uh, amended lease. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good, thank you. So and let me just ask a question. So what I expect then is that uh, you folks will um, sign the lease or <coughs> send it back to me for signature. Is that the so is that voted the expectation? On. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we do have a couple of items uh, under other business. Uh, one request that we wanted to see if the board can entertain today, um, Orange Blossom, uh, the last tenant in the underneath the parking garage, has applied for a grant. Um, we have, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kaiser has prepared a memo, um, and we would like to see instead of waiting for December and keep adding more time if you would be willing to hear the proposal for the grant today um, and proceed with that. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, 
I'm here to represent uh, our restaurant and food service grant request from Orange Blossom Coffee. They are going to be occupying the south corner unit and that will complete the uh, retail and um, <coughs> stores that are in the, the bottom of the garage. So um, there's been quite a lot of um, roadblocks, if you will, with permitting and things of that nature. Um, the storms didn't help. Um, finding a contractor didn't help. But um, because of the timeline, um, I wanted to try to get this in front of you for this meeting because um, Melissa Lilly, who's here, she is also the owner, um, really plans and has the foresight to be opened in the middle of next month. Mm -hmm. So it's timing wise, it's, um, I, I think it's critical at, at this point for, you know, to complete this in the downtown core, um, especially with season coming and, you know, it's even better with folks that are, mm -hmm. you know, foot trafficking through the downtown area, um, Christmas lights, holidays, and the main street um, events that are taking place. So I had mapped out in the application itself and have gone through the general contractor's costs. Um, I extrapolated the numbers of those costs or those expenses for eligible improvements. Um, being as though this is a restaurant and food service grant, any of those items are items that cannot be removed. They're, they're in the building, such as plumbing, electric. Um, there, was, there had to be some enhancement to the um, electrical box. Um, of course, the air conditioning is already there, so we're talking about items that make up the interior or the, the guts of the building or the business. Mm -hmm. um, attached to your packet, there's a build-out sheet. I highlighted those numbers um, that are eligible, and the total amount came out to 23445 This is a 50-50 matching grant, and so the, the amount that I would be asking the board to consider today is an amount of 11000 722.50, and I am here to take any questions. Mine is not highlighted very good. Uh, it's, it says 750, 5170, and 7680, which is plumbing and framing and drywall. And and then if you drop down the electric, it, it didn't copy yeah, very well, and I apologize. It, so electric is, is 9, the 9,000. Okay, so th those four items? Yes. In and addition they, and they to are because the electric stays there, the correct. plumbing, nothing, plumbing nothing stays there. Nothing can be removed. Nothing that can we be removed, right. Willing uh, to. Framing and drywall and right. then the demo. And then there's also the um, <coughs> the wow. sub panel with the breakers that had to be upgraded. Right. Um, that was another additional $845. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay, so you did the math and it came out to 11,722? Yeah. Yes, the total amount of current. Now, there were some items in there that have already been done. So I took those out, obviously, because the work has okay. started without coming forward. Okay. I know that um, Miss Lily's been working with um, our city administrator and I believe the mayor with regards to the lease for this particular spot in the building and then <coughs> came to me or came to the CRA right. office inquiring about the grant right so we wanted to encourage you know her to participate in the program okay um, so just because also I cannot see the the, the highlights um, if I add up framing and drywall plumbing and electric it comes up to 19,340 right and then there's a charge for 3,500 for the architectural designs which is in the grant 
to say that we will cover that. Okay. Um, and an additional $845 for the circuit panel in the, in the um, upgraded breaker box. Okay, so five items, okay. Correct. Just wanted to clarify, thank you. I think Mary Ann had her card up. Yep. Yes, I did. Okay, I, I'm just trying to understand because the city council accepted the recommendation from the city administrator back in March, April. They actually signed their lease in May, Mary. Okay. Ms. Barnaby. In May. Yes, ma'am. And it was my understanding that we were going to have all of those retail slots opened in July. That is correct. And that did not happen. I have, I'm sorry. Well, here's the thing. Again, I think that when I voted for individuals, businesses to be selected to be in the garage retail space, at no time did anybody tell me that they were, this, they were going to come and ask for CRA money. That's true. And, and they were supposed again, to and they were supposed to be open in July. Correct. This is not July. Okay. I and here we are in November and saying, well, it might not be until January or February that they're open. And my concern is if I don't go along with this, are they going to open at all? Well, let me, let me answer your question. I did have a brief meeting with um, Mr. Perry, who informed me of the current circumstances that are going on with the lease, which I was completely unaware of because we're not involved in the leasing process. Um, so once I understood what had been happening or what is going on, I put a stipulation in to the motion and um, shared that with Attorney Rudisell, who uh, approved it, so that we would be covering, you know, everything. I don't, I don't want to posture the city, and I don't want to posture the CRA, certainly to lose money or to have you all have somebody in default of a lease. So, what I did in, at the bottom, where you see the recommendation, um, the stipulation is that if at any time prior to the completion and receipt of certificate of op occupancy, the tenant is in a tenant is default of the lease agreement with the city of Bradenton, said funding will be denied. Now I am being told by Ms. Lilly, and, and she can certainly, you're welcome to come up and answer any questions, that this work will be done in the second week of December. We discussed this at length, um, you know, if, of course it's, it's, you know, it's, it's up to you all. Um, had I known about this sooner, but I did not know. I did not know that they were gonna approach and ask about our, our grants. Okay. Can I? Again, I, I'm sorry, go right No, ahead. no, no, go ahead. No, I, I uh, Mr. Perry, can I ask you to step up, please? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been told I've got the scooter face again, so. Um, when we were brought the entities forward that were going to um, be signing leases with the, the, the garage retail spaces, at that time, had anybody talked with you about, oh, well, if I do this, I'm going to need to get funding from the CRA to be able to fulfill my obligation? No, not that I'm aware of. Um, of course, Mr. Baca um, spoke with all those folks that were expressed interest, and he presented me with a package of, I think there was 19 in there, and he had kind of went through them and had a recommendations for a mix of different types of businesses. And I took that to council, and I think I provided the, 
entire list of the, uh, of the submitters and, and with the recommendations and that's what was approved. But I don't remember any dialogue specifically with any of them or Mr. Baca for that matter <coughs> regarding um, any sort of um, uh, financial incentive. Because uh, my concern is is that we, we were pretty firm with you that we wanted to see those spaces opened and opened as quickly as possible. That's correct. Um, just on that front, wait, and if that's what you're asking about, and if, and if not, just cut me off. But I can tell you that it be, it began to concern me about oh I don't know probably four months ago, um, perhaps longer about Orange Blossom, and what had happened was two the, both food services, the ice cream shop and o Orange Blossom, wanted to do modifications. In order to do the modifications. Um, it's a structural concrete floor uh, that goes into the garage, and they went to planning, and and planning told them because the ice cream shop had actually already cut the concrete, mm -hmm. and we said time out, stop, <laughs> and we need an engineering certification. Yeah. Now, generally speaking, they're small cuts; they're for drains basically, so it's not going to compromise the integrity of. Uh, of the structure. So I went to Pat and I said, what do you think, uh, Mr. Wenzel, building safety? And he said, I think we'll be fine, but I would like to get some engineering on it. And so they actually did get um, an engineer. It took them a little bit to get that engineering too. I'd say it probably put them, <coughs> I don't know, probably at least a, put a month behind the eight ball. At the same time, Orange Blossom and the owner of it, I, f I forget her name, it escapes me at this moment. Um, Miss Lily that's sitting right there. Okay, M Melissa okay. Lilly. Thank you, ma'am. Yep, had contacted us. And I think, I think Corey Fortin had contacted Miss Lilly several times, several times. Because I told her, I said, get with them, find out when they're going to open, what the plan is. And there was some delays as it relates to the city getting them some direction and then there was delays with them saying well we did get we can't get an engineer it's going to take time and then we got the engineer but a contractor has a problem and so there was there was a repeated and and, and it's tough to get contractors this isn't anything about about orange blossom or or the owners but it's taken time and my problem is the fairness of it is those right. other companies had to suffer through June all the way till now. Some, some slow times down there right. selling retail. Right. And I'd be really fortunate if I was in shape where I didn't have to do that until snowbird season when it's going to be busier downtown, right. opening up in January. If I was operating a, a business, mm -hmm. that's what would be my preference right. probably, is to open it up at the busiest time when I'm going to have the most amount of foot traffic. Now, in fairness, the rent's been paid mm. continuously. Yeah. But now with the, with the incentive, is CRA paying the rent for that six months? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And okay. I can tell you, I assure you that, that, that Ms. Ms. Fortin has those emails. And okay. I can get her down here with those emails. Question? So, uh, sure. Uh, um, well, wait, we had... Uh, Jane was up. Jane oh, okay, I'm up. sorry. Pam was up. Okay. Well, um, I mean, I was just... Actually, Mr. Perry kind of okay. was saying right. what I had heard, okay. that there were some delays. And I, I can speak towards how hard it is to get contractors, and en okay. especially engineers, because they don't want to deal with you on a little, okay. un unless you've got one on staff, it's sometimes very difficult. So, um, and I would like to say, I, I, I really, I think we all said how much we wanted a coffee shop down there and I think because when you start doing the food and the plumbing and all that um, I think that that's part of the delay now that being said um, you know I, I, I think we're gonna have four other business wise. owners kind of really upset and, with us and, and I think they'll be happy when they have a coffee shop there and it starts pulling some people in <laughs> that's what I would like so, and just so you all know um, this showed up last minute with the hmm. CRA and I, I talked to the, to the um, director about if we can squeeze it in to see. But I, I there are, there's, this is a dilemma. This is what I call an ethical dilemma. Is it, is it fair to the people that have already 
done it and didn't ask for money and, it, and it's no it's not the, it's not this person's fault it's just it's just the way it is but it it turns into a dilemma Ms. Ms. I, have Postman. I I just wanted to say I, I had pretty much um, concur with what what councilwoman um, Coker said you know it, it is difficult in this, this in these special times also to get contractors and supply and it, it, and it is you know and then government is slow uh, in terms of responding this is definitely a dilemma though um, I really would hate to to lose this you know small business coming in you know on the corner with a coffee shop because I've been waiting for it and um, you know so I, <coughs> this is truly a dilemma I, I, I guess we're going to have to have more discussion because I you want um, yes in just a sec I, uh, I just want to speak on behalf of the CRA staff for a second um, in the last five minutes of this discussion regarding City Council and the City of Bradenton and this lease or leases and the you know the agreements and the understandings with them I feel enlightened in the sense that there's a lot of information that I didn't know mm -hmm. so naturally for staff to look at a new business coming in and you know to try to to lift them up mm -hmm. it, which is you know what we do um, I think had I had enough information I may have backpedaled a bit and maybe had more conversations with Mr. Perry Miss Fortin and so just wanted you to realize that in no way I want to put anybody here on the dais on the spot and Karen you've always been a, a, a great employee and, and very eager to help anyone that comes into the office. Uh, this is, this is, this is on us. This is our problem. Right. Uh, uh, I have a can place. I have the floor now, please? Um, Wait, did I, did PM? Um, yeah. I'm you, did you have something else? No, no, no. Okay. Um, my understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong, that there was to be no major or any types of renovations other than maybe some drywalls to partition off. I in these, know that, sir. well, I that's what I agreed to because the discussions that city council. Right, that's know, what the council about. agreed to. Okay. If we have to go back and check the record, that's fine. That there was to be no modifications because if you did modifications now, you've modified it to that particular business and made it the next person that comes along, if there is, uh, might not want that, and then that becomes now another maintenance item for us. Basically, I looked at it as you get the lease, it's a shell. Whatever you want to do for, to it, you have to get our approval first. And there is no major renovations. We're talking about walls. You already had a, a restroom, concrete floor. You can't, you know, come in and do any of those things. And that's the problem we have with putting the ice cream gate, I mean, ice cream sign <laughs> up, uh, up to the uh, deal, which I voted for. But fine, we did not. Uh, approve that so that that's the fairness issue so these these other event these other uh, tenants have now put in some so they should be able to come back and get money so we're opening the door for that the only point I'm trying to make is the fact that this tenant whether in the garage or in an, another freestanding building was allowed to get permitting to do the work yeah and I and I feel like they're being i mean if they came to us and they were anywhere else we would be giving them a restaurant grant and yes. now we're almost you know making it harder for them because we're the landlord but we we had those stipulations when we leased that and if that didn't happen mr perry's here and if mr bocker <coughs> went out and made a promise or something then we should have known about it not now well you shouldn't you you wouldn't be able to have any kind of food service or anything in there without some of these changes, I would think. Well, well we got an ice cream shop. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, yeah, and I think both parties are right here. 
Right. Councillor Sanders is right that actually the lease agreements, as I remember, mm -hmm. had restrictions that no permanent improvements could be made by the tenant improvements, basically, without the permission of the city. I believe I did take it to city council when we were doing the selections, talking about food service, and that there was a couple of different things. One, you're going to need drains, and then secondly, you may need we didn't want to do grease traps right. because of right. separate issues, but but uh, the power sources. And if you're going to generate any kind of heat or use any kind of electricity, you're going to have to go to 220 opposed to, to 110. And so I think even those like ovens that they have at uh, at Subway and the like, the turbo blast ovens, and I don't know what they plan on using there, we contemplated for food service that it would be required. And, and I think we have <coughs> a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And so I think I probably mentioned it under new business that we, uh, we were going to be looking at that. I, I, I have a memory of that. I'd have to actually research when and, and what specifically I said. But I think we're both right there. That the contract didn't provide for it that were, that were originally proposed. But I did raise it and say that we were going we to allow that for those food service locations. So um, I just, so the way the problem is, as we see it, is that um, we put we we made it it was an all call on and what you want this was a corner property it's the most uh, most sought after property um, everything is done this is the one that's uh, last coming in there's been issues legitimate issues and so the other ones had been open and, and did everything we asked um, and but that then they, they had problems so here we are with this and then now <coughs> on top of it they're asking for money and the others haven't received it now now the retail shops didn't do anything so there wouldn't be any money to be given them well, they had to trick out their stores yeah, yeah so but I, Marianne I'm not I'm not saying taking a side here I'm just saying yeah so exactly. so the problem is if we if we say yes we might have a tenant that says well, wait a minute that doesn't seem fair we followed the rules and, and we well we, we followed the rules and we didn't and if we say no, it doesn't seem fair to, to the applicant. So there's, there's your dilemma. And I just point Which, out that in conversations that I regularly have with the, uh, the, the uh, tenants that we have, they, they have been stressing the need for all of the business to stay open consistently. Right. And, and uh, that some of the, uh, the folks basically have had other types of issues regarding particularly the air conditioning in those units. Mm -hmm. It's the craziest thing, they have garage doors, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't refrigerate a no. place that you know, has garage doors because a, 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 an air conditioning system is a closed loop system. Right. It takes air, it recirculates it through its filtration and cooling system. The same thing will happen in your house if you open your slider. The vents will start to leak because it's called condensation. What happens is basically, the moisture in the air turns in from a gas to a liquid, and it leaks. It condensates down, and we're dealing with that. And 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 they've had to suffer through that as well. They've had merchandise. Damage. They've had they've had merchandise absolutely that that's been destroyed. So, you know, keeping things consistent and fair is kind of important here. I would say, yeah. And, and Miss Fortin's coming down with the uh, the email that were that that were exchanged. If we need to document exactly what the dates and, and the substance of those communications were. Again, I've, we're, we've been placed between a rock and a hard place. You've got four other organizations that abided by the regulations, the rules, did what they said they were going to do, and opened when it was not fun to be open, because there was hardly anybody down here in July. Um, Mr. Perry has stated, I mean, the, peop the clothing stores have had some of their merchandise have condensation. And, and my, my comment to that is if Disney figured out how to do it, then we need to be able to figure out how to do it because Disney has their places open all the time, but they're also air conditioned. Um, if I might ask or make a request, Ms. Lilly would like to speak with the board or address the board. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to have the scooter face on. Oh, I, don't think, I don't think you will. This is Josh Schmidt, who um, is with Banyan Coffee, but he's my business partner in providing our coffee. 
-hmm. So um, I just want to address that. I don't want you to think that we're not going to open if we don't get money. We're going to open. We have had some speed bumps. Um, the first one being finding a contractor, which we finally found one that would work within our timeline. Um, so he has worked day and night with us. And yes, the electrical panel, the plumbing, all that, that was big. Um, and updating the electrical panel, that has been big. And yes, we did get it approved. And every Monday, we did have a conversation with um, Mr. Perry and um, his secretary or assistant. And um, so yes, I went through the step up circle. I'm a city resident and um, went through the step up circle class and they told us about the CRA. And so that is why I applied, but it has no bearing whether we're going to open. I've been paying rent since June um, diligently. And so we're going to open. We want to be here. I own another business in the city and I want, we want to be a part of it. That's what we're doing. I have a 19 year old daughter that I want her to take over the coffee shop and be here. Good. So I just wanted you all to know that. And if Josh wants to say a few words, I, of course. Yeah. Um, no, I, did, I wasn't actually preparing to say anything today, <laughs> but uh, I would have presented myself a little bit better, but I came from the other coffee shop. So I'm not used to talking into a mic. So uh, Mr. Perry, thank you too, for just making this process. Um, I know it's been difficult for several uh, parties, if it's government, private. Um, again, I personally, I don't take this lightly, uh, delaying one taxpayers because, you know, they want to see a return on their investment. And I see that as a business too. Like, I know Melissa doesn't want to just, we don't be paying rent for nothing not to be open. So this has never been our intentions to delay anything. Um, we meet, Melissa and I have been going through this process uh, probably since October before this even came about. Um, so probably a year, for, uh, a little over a year now. Um, but once we got, you know, approved to it, you know, it was grounds running, you know, on this whole project. And, you know, we, I think it was a communication problem um, on everybody, not just if it was government or us individually. I think we talked to, I think Ben Barker was, um, kind of handling a lot of this and you know I, I have nothing but good things to say and I think this is a uncharted water for everybody because we've never um, I don't think the city's ever leased something like this before so I think we're all new to this process and I hope to see this happen more for other businesses um, so I think everybody just needs to have a, a little grace in this whole process I again I don't want to take anything lightly on uh, dragging our feet because I mean you know as a business owner you know it's you know it, it's very important to be also efficient and effective so I I do apologize for you know if it's just the city of Bradenton in general on that so um, again thank you for you know helping our small business in yes. this whole process thank you. Questions while you're up there. Um, so <clears throat> when you originally had the idea to open the coffee shop back whenever that was put out almost a year ago, um, what were you told? What were you told? Because I was told as a council person that there was to be no major renovations, and if there was, we'd had to prove it, and it would be on your own dime. So I'm still back there several months ago with what I thought was going to happen. So I certainly didn't expect an application to come in. So who <laughs> told you to, who, how, how did you, how did this come about? Did Mr. Barker do that, or who? I know you don't want to point finger, but we got to figure yeah, out this. Honestly, I don't know where it came from. We just knew that you know other company, other businesses in the local area were also uh, applying for these grants. So we just figured right. we would submit an application. And it was in the step up circle, and it was through Ben. Um, step, the step, step up, up circle. What, what is that? Realize Bradenton, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they. So okay. I, Entrepreneurship that program. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's that's what I'm. Yes. Uh, that's that's. <laughs> you know, they just said it was available. Well, it, it it. I'm sorry that they misled you because it's. I didn't think it was available on these units. That was my position, and uh, if it is, then I was. If if the rest of the board decides to do this, I believe in fairness, and everybody else should get the same opportunity. So you know, I'm sorry that 
that was done. I didn't have no control of it, but I wanted to know how it started because I've had dealings with Mr. Barker before. Okay, Mr. Barker's not here to protect himself. He should be. And I, I don't think it's in one individual in particular. Um, yeah, I, I think too, for reason why we thought it was a, more of an incentive is because if you take like also the ice cream um, business, you know, we had to dig up the ground, you know, that's plumbing. The other vendors didn't have to do the plumbing, electrical, because coffee requires heating elements. I mean, it's a lot more um, wattage going through there. So it does require stuff, especially up to code. Um, and also, if you have to look at it in the long-term perspective, if you decide to kick us out or something, uh, we don't want to do that. But um, we're also adding value to that building by if someone else wanted to have uh, a restaurant down the street uh, or in the uh, another complex, we're, we're also adding value to that building itself too. Um, so I don't want you to think like we're just trying to get a, a free hand me out or anything like that. Okay. So, so, yeah. so Thank you for your time. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, I don't I'll apologize because yes, I've been sitting here a while and it's not comfortable. Um, I'm comfortable with approving a, a, a or making the motion to approve a restaurant and food services program, but only up to five thousand dollars. They're asking. I, I think it's over Eleven, ten. Eleven seven. Yes. Well. But I, again, what? Well, and I, I, I think that's a good compromise. I, well, let me, let me just finish that um, we do have this food service program, and it is available to anyone that is in the, the CRA boundaries. This was complicated by the fact that it was a city property and a city project. I don't want to be horribly punitive. If I wanted to be horribly punitive, I would say I make a motion to deny completely. And I'm not doing that. But I also think that we're going to get a little bit of grief and we need to be prepared for it from the other tenants. So at, at, there may be a second, there may not be a second, but that's my motion. But I will not support the full amount. So if somebody makes a motion for the full amount, I'm not voting in favor of that. Uh, Ms. Ms. Coachman. Just she said. seconded in our conversation. I say, fine, I'll go along with that. As long as everybody else has an opportunity to recoup some of their expenses on the other four units. You know, because we're going to get that, I'm going to get those calls. I am. I've you. already gotten uh, <laughs> some complaints because of opening and so forth. So uh, they're already on the table. I've been, I've been fielding those. So I think, I believe in fairness, and I believe that the other four tenants should have the same right to a $5,000. Uh, They're uh, not um, restaurants. Wait, um, no, no, no. Okay, so let's, let's, let's stop that. Can, can that. we let's, not bloody, wait, 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 can we wait, just stop, deal with. Stop, 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 stop. Mr. Coachman. I just wanted to make the comment that, yes, we may get some pushback from this, um, but the needs of that business so different from selling a beautiful dress or having some butter pecan ice cream. Uh, you know, um, I'm just not, saying. Not that you've done that a lot. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it, it, it had some different needs. And that's, that's a good point. And also, and remember, seven. these people got the corner. These people got the corner, and, and that was sought after. Um, yes, Jane. Well, I, I think that that is why um, they're the, they're going to be the anchor there. They're going to be bringing people there all times of the day. It's a it's going to be a coffee shop, and it's going to help those other people. It's they're going to be the anchor store, so to speak. If those other people want to apply for one of our grants, as long as they can fit into our program, I. I'm in favor of it. I would have been fine with giving him the uh, entire amount, but 
And I would caution the board that about going back for work that has been completed because that's one of our stipulations because then every restaurant in town can come and apply. So I would caution against that. And I think that we need to point out that while there's grants, still we're doing a lot of things to help their businesses be successful, like supporting the uh, downtown events and winter wonderland and the regatta i mean that's going to be boons to these businesses so while they may not have had a restaurant grant which i the only person i think that could even come close would have been the ice cream um you know i just think that we need to let them know we're doing a lot for them <laughs> mr chairman can i be heard yeah um you know i, I hate to repeat myself but but pretty much everything people have set up here is, is true and accurate to the extent of you will get those calls from the other folks because they've been struggling. I, I go there about once a week, every, at least every couple of weeks, and usually talk I to them. I walk on the other side of the street and come back. Yeah, sometimes even that, for sure. Seriously, it's like I got to get to some place and yeah, yeah I, I don't want to get dragged. I can't in. do nothing about it. And I get the calls. I mean, I can show you the text from a couple of yep. them about the air conditioning systems and the like that I referred to earlier. They're, they're angry. And what Councilwoman Coachman talked about as far as they're different types of businesses. These are businesses that Miss Lily and her partners had to put an extreme amount of money into um, to get them those, do those improvements, basically, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, that all being said, I've kind of fondled with the idea of realizing how difficult it is to start these smaller businesses, and they are, and they've been successful, and I think most of them will be successful going forward, but a thousand bucks here or a couple thousand there, it's tough when you're a small business. Yes, yes. A lot of these things are not eligible, these, those retail establishments for the, for the restaurant <coughs> program because I don't think they're eligible reimbursement expenses. Right. However, what I probably would consider on the city side is saying I can maybe do a, a one month's rent abatement that's worth $1,000 or $1,100 or $1,200. The CRA side spends 5000 for this project. Mm -hmm. We deal with the ice cream shot separately because it is a food service right. and it may be eligible, even though the work was done and, and, and that is there. And then I try to show a gesture of good faith on behalf that's, of that's, council that's as it relates idea. to the other ones. I mean, the reality is, is that I think total revenue on the five shops is going to be about 80000 a year. It's roughly $1,000 a month, depending on the size. The place is bigger. Um, uh, Orange Blossom is going to be bi it's, it's bigger and, and, and it's I, I think I forget what the monthly rent is. Is it 1577? Yeah, and that's the highest one mm -hmm. and the like. So that's not a bad way to try to help everybody a little bit. Like and, and, and you know, I've looked at these emails and I, I can't tell you that, <laughs> that, that they, ha they haven't operated in good faith. There's been delays there. I, I, Some of them I wish hadn't been as long as they have. Right, and right. I told Corey early on, stay in contact. Please don't let them drag things out. And I can't say that I feel that they've ever dragged things out. Right. But, but when you look at these, there's a couple months here, six weeks there, and, and they're explainable to a certain level. It is hard to get the contractors and the like. So what everybody said is true. And, and the motion for the $5,000 may be a good way to resolve this to everybody's benefit. I agree with that 100%. And that, that's an excellent idea. Thank you. This is but, twice you two have agreed. Yeah. I know. Oh all, all hell's going to break loose here in a minute. Oh, it's, 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 it's Miller time. Hey. Uh, <laughs> the attorney's sick in there. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, one more thing. The, 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 either the city, I think, should pay for this air conditioning in those open shops or give them the five, that, whatever it costs. I think we need to absorb that, and that would – solve some of this i don't know about the ice cream shop did they have expenses because they got freezers and stuff yeah no they had to do they had to do uh, uh drain pours cut the car all right so they, they, they should be reimbursed for that and and then take care of the air conditioning and in that they, way then everybody's fair not not through the cra so well I, I, can't do yeah, I don't think we're reimbursing these folks what we are doing is incentivizing them with a five thousand dollar payment i imagine their tenant improvements are considerably more uh, well, sure it is. It's fifty thousand dollars. And the like, but that's the cost of doing a special business, you know. I guess to a certain extent, retail is different than food service, for sure. Um, uh, yeah, so you know, it makes sense as as it relates to air conditioning. I have uh, 
I have got our people from facilities maintenance to go over there regularly. Um, starting in June when they opened, I, we bought in consultants. We spoke with the prior HVAC contractors that had done those units. And there seems to be a, a somewhat of a lack of a construction or HVAC solution to the problem. Mary, uh, how does Disney do it? Well, you know, that, that's <laughs> a good question. Right. And, I mean, and, 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 and how does Costco flippant, do it? But and well, right. I went over there and said, remember the plastic slats when you walk through Costco in the store? Mm -hmm. You go in to get your eggs. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not, you're not putting those plastic slats up on that beautiful <laughs> building. Keep, try again. Right. Yeah, oh. Try yeah, again, yeah. Perry. Try yeah. again. We don't want it. We don't want it and everything. We'll have pretty gold leaves. But it's retail. And, and, and it's nice that it's open, but open means you've got a cooling problem. How Disney does it, I don't know how they built Space Mountain, but you know they, they got some pretty good people okay. that work for them, and maybe we should talk to well, them to a certain extent. Or maybe but I can we tell you the people we did talk to, Counselor, they, they, they basically said insulating it won't help. The pipes themselves there are du dual insulation. When you see that big round pipe, that's the exterior. Inside there is insulation that takes that cold air that comes through. The problem is it gets soaked with water and it leaks down onto inventory, onto guests. We talked about trying to run drains with some sheet metal work up there, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's tough. You, you I wish convinced I had me answer. that you've talked to some people. I'm not convinced we've talked to the right people completely, totally yet. But I've been sitting in this meeting or in this room now since 8.30 this morning with less than an hour break, and I'm telling you, my back is killing me. So right, can we vote right. on this, and can we move on? Fine. One last point on the AC. What? Oh, uh, yep. <laughs> is we might have to go to window glazing. They're retail places, they need window space to attract people in. Maybe AC won't work when you have a garage door. We just glaze it with glass, nice showroom, they look in, come on in, you know, and you walk through the door and the door closes. That would cost the city some money, but it, we want a successful endeavor and we're starting to develop one down there. Mm -hmm. okay. as, far as, as far as the construction, and, 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 and I'm sorry about your back, I know, okay. I know. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, we'll yeah, call yeah. on the question. You're not getting paid by the word today. You are not getting paid by the word. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have a motion yeah, I'm a ready. for 5,000. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. What day is it? Well, I was, I don't know if you want to leave it for the December 14th meeting. It is up to yeah. you. We, uh, we saw that uh, when the agenda for the city came out, they proposed dates for next year. So uh, we, we weren't, we, we didn't know they were going to do it this month. So if you wanted to vote, at least you have the proposed well, dates. Well, it could or be that when we have the, the two new members, we may choose not to do it on a Wednesday. So... That's uh, Wednesday and Friday were the only times METV was available. I understand that, but it could be a different Wednesday than Absolutely. a council meeting where, yeah. Or time of day. I, I, I'd like to make my plea again. <laughs> For a different day, a different, <laughs> a different uh, uh, having these meetings back to back. Is not productive, in my opinion. Can you at least vote for the January one, so we'll have one, and then maybe in December we dis or in January we discuss the rest with the board, with the new board, if that's make what a you motion like. that we set the, uh, G the the January board meeting to be on January 25th, and at have the schedule to be an item for discussion amongst the board. Second. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have a meeting in, G in December. Okay. Unless you direct well, otherwise. Yeah, let the next board do it. Do it. That's fine. We have one on December 14th. Right. Um, I just wanted to find out about the 2023 um, <coughs> meeting schedule for the CRA board since today you voted for the city council. Um, so I was, we, you know, we just made a proposal. We can discuss it if you want further in December. But the motion is to have a January 25th meeting and then the new board to decide what dates oh, okay. they would like. But we are still having the... December 14th and January 25th. Okay. No, this December 14th and then January 25th. December 14th and then January 25th. And we have a city council on... No, the January... Oh, the, well, 18th? there's a meeting on the 18th, but... 
It's okay. There's on the 3rd and the 18th on the city council. Right, but this is just a different, it, it's, we have, re, because the January meeting is a different date. Yeah, I see that. So we would be having it, that would be the only meeting on the 25th. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, all right, I so you, we, we had a motion a second. You all going to change okay, that? Okay, wait a minute. Tell you what, I'll withdraw my motion. Y'all have at it. <laughs> Let the new board decide. Figure, but we have to have the meeting in January with the board. We have to set the we'll date. Keep it the same as it is right now. Well, the thing is, is that there's only one board, one city council meeting, which is the 18th, and the staff has requested that we do it on the 25th. I, I just used the, we've always had it on the 4th, that's the only, I mean, if you want it on the 18th, we now can, we but, but then you want to try different Wednesdays and see how it works out, and then you make a decision, whatever. I. December 14th, January 25th. As you can imagine. Should I reinstate I really my motion? How about we decide <laughs> December 14th? We got more more meetings December 14th, right? Yeah, we can decide it on the 14th. Oh, decide on the 14th. Okay. It's time to go home. Okay. We got one more meeting. Yeah, we got don't, one more meeting. Don't rush it. Okay. Is that it? Anyone else? Uh, got anything else? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. If that's what you want. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? There you go.